talking more about the discoveries that took place in Alexandria and the sunken city. Over the phone, we have Mr. Samir Abbas, tourism expert. Hello. 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 Good, Good morning, sir. Glad to talk to you. So, first of all, can you tell us more about the latest discovery that took place, especially that it has been under the water for more than thousands of years? Uh, sure. You know, so, uh, first of all, thanks for choosing this unique topic. It is really important for different reasons. It's uh, open a door of a very unique type of tourism and tourists, and also helping us to uh, clarify and uh, understand, like some unexplained part of uh, Egypt history, an important part, like the links between Egypt and the Mediterranean, uh, existing in Alexandria. Uh, so. And uh, there is many discoveries has been happens over over the years from the beginning of the century. By the way, there is a very a very Egyptian initiative from the beginning of the century around um, around 1920 and 1930 of uh, underwater discovery, which is as early as the time. But it came to its peak by by the end of the at the beginning 20th century 21st century when by the French archaeologists and they were extremely active. Uh, Hello? Uh, uh, very recent, that was uh, in September 2023rd, there was a big discovery in Heraclum. And Heraclum, that was the ancient name of uh, a city, lies in East Alexandria. Now, those who are familiar with Alexandria, it lies in Abukir, Abukir Bay, which is uh, nearly uh, 18 to 20 kilometers to the east of Alexandria. So, in, in Abukir Bay, they, they found an ancient city, and this ancient city has been sunk under the water, and that is because of, uh, because of uh, serious or serious series of earthquakes. Many earthquakes hit Alexandria in the ancient time, uh, causing uh, uh, causing a sunken of the many uh, many antiquities along the delta. There was uh, these earthquakes followed by tide waves that triggered land uh, land collapse, and that caused almost 110 kilometers of uh, Egypt coastline uh, and delta to collapse under the water, taking the city of uh, of Heraklion and many other sites near Alexandria today and in the heart of Alexandria today, uh, like from the east to the west, uh, Abu Kir, Mamora, Shadbi, in eastern uh, harbor, and in Kaid Bay. All of these sites, for those who are familiar with Alexandria or visiting Alexandria, they are, some of them they are in the heart of the city now. How far can we describe the whole uh, situation as having under the Mediterranean and Alexandria, we have an open uh, museum under the water? So in, uh, thanks for raising this topic because, because of the, a proper underwater museum is like uh, a big dream and a big goal to achieve. Um, it, so the interesting thing that uh, normally those who are those who choose to have a property in the ancient time and modern time as well, a property near the sea, they are the rich people or the royal class in Alexandria back in that time. 
and the elites of Alexandria today. So, so which is mean that those these monuments, which is sunk under the water, they are one of the most important monuments in Alexandria back in that time. And these monuments and Alexandria back in that time, it was the richest and the most important and the most luxurious city in the Mediterranean world. So, to uh, this is just a note to give a highlight of how important and how valuable and how rich these monuments are. So, so co- considering talking about future now and considering about the hope and the dream of having a proper underwater museum, I think if this project came to the light, that will help greatly to uh, not only to uh, to uh, introduce these antiques to the whole world, but also will attra- help to attract tourists to Alexandria and to Egypt as well. Considering that Alexandria's share of tourism is actually is very low compared to the number of tourists arriving in Egypt, um, the, the rough estimate or the average of number of tourists arriving in Egypt is like 10 million a year. Of course, there is more or less. It depends on the situation. But but I think that less than 5% of that arrive in Alexandria or to visit Alexandria. And even when they, when they go to Alexandria, the the only most of them is they do a day trip, not even staying the night there. So having the underwater museum that will help attracting the attention of many unique type of tourism, which is not very well known uh, in many in many places. Um, uh, it is not a way to say that there is. It is difficult to see under the underwater monuments. Now, no, there is a chance see the underwater monuments and myself I had the privilege uh, two years ago to dive in the eastern harbor and in a diving trip specialized to explore the monuments under the water and uh, when I, I and I was doing that escorting one of the uh, like one of the Hollywood movie stars which is attracted by the theme of the ancient lighthouse of Lake Andre, and I took him on a diving trip in this area. Uh, talking about my personal experience in that, we were able to spot and see some antiques and uh, under the water, which is, belongs to the ancient lighthouse of Alexandria, which is one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Uh, but I think that the proper attention and uh, and uh, and, uh, and uh, like defining routes and even there is some there is even some archaeologists talks about about having a a glass dome under the water to make it possible even for people who cannot dive to go and see underwater monuments. I think that if we manage to do something like that, that will attract millions of tourists uh, for this unique type of uh, attraction in Alexandria. And I think that Alexandria, based on its history and its fame in the ancient time, it deserved it. Uh, another, uh, another project, since you opened this topic about the underwater museum, another project which is also could be of a extremely extremely important is rebuilding the ancient lighthouse of Alexandria. It's we have the plans, we have the we have the location, we have uh, more than two thousand four hundred uh, block huge block from the ancient lighthouse it's under the water now. We have also the statues which is used to decorate the ancient lighthouse uh, of Alexandria it still like has been fished out from the water, by the way, and we have everything to rebuild it uh, in a location which is in the same location or near to the same near to the location, and I think that will attract the attention of many people too. We have a wide range of divers from all over the world who are really very much interested to come to Egypt to enjoy different facilities and different means of entertainment in addition, of course, or basically talking about diving. So, of course, now, according to what you are saying, we can use this to attract divers to the Mediterranean and this is going to be a different kind of diving as well. Definitely, definitely. And, uh, and uh, if Egypt share from the world of tourism now is like uh, or 10 million which is in the in the highest in the highest scenario it will it will reach 15 million um, com- compared to other countries like in Spain for example like 80 million investing actually in Spain so a project like this one will attract will attract many people to this ancient city I would like to give an example uh, like as a case study something to compare with uh, Rome. Uh, Rome 
uh, in around the 1930s and 40s, there is hardly anything from the tools existing in Rome now in Italy we were able to see. So because Rome was was totally ancient Rome was, was mostly buried underneath the modern city of Rome in that time. So it was an initiative and a very a very brief brave plan and decisions to relocate many of the houses and facilities in the central part of the modern city of Rome to excavate the ancient city of Rome. In that time, this decision was met by a big opposition, but in the time being, there is millions of tourists uh, feeding the Italian economy, the mainly driven to visit Italy by because of the ancient city of Rome, which is, has been totally executed in, uh, in around the 1940s, 1950s. So what I'm trying to say here is ancient Alexandria, which is, it was classified as the, luxur the most luxurious, the most powerful, the most beautiful, and the, the most uh, existed actually in sitting the Mediterranean back in the ancient time more than 2,000 years ago. This ancient city, only a very small part is, has been brought to light. The catacomb, the Roman amphitheater, the Pompeius pillar. But apart from that, the entire city is still buried underneath, waiting for excavations. And that is made a brief political decision and compensation of people, so we can, uh, so we can, uh, so we can bring this ancient city back alive, back to life again, and that will see them in which not only Alexander economy, the whole Egyptian economy, uh, when that happens, inshallah. Could you tell us more about uh, the different pieces, I mean the, the important uh, pieces that were discovered among all these uh, items? Okay, so as I'm uh, like giving an example, you know, so Aphrodite, there is Aphrodite sanctuary and the temple of Ammon has been discovered at, in the last year, in September, the last year, September uh, 2023, and, uh, in Abu Kir. Uh, the statues of the Ptolemy's kings has been fished out from the water and they are out of granite, beautiful granite. They are now standing at the gate to the new library of Alexandria. Another, another small obelisk is tablets with hieroglyphic and stories has been fished out from the water as well. And uh, the places where the places where people can go and visit and see these monuments, they are in the in the Roman amphitheater, there is a small collection, but good actually collection. Uh, the Greek Roman Museum of Alexandria, the National Museum of Alexandria, also in the Archaeological Museum of the uh, New Library of Alexandria. These are all sites where people they can go and visit some of the uh, fished antiques of the uh, something that antiques for Alexandria. Right. Um, actually, uh, also, uh, when we talk uh, about this, uh, definitely we have many uh, beautiful items to uh, enjoy uh, and to go to Alexandria, whether we are going to travel around to take a look at many different uh, monuments, in addition to diving and finding out more about the sunken city. So, Mr. Samir Abbas, our tourism expert, thank you very much for joining us. And uh, moving on to a short break, then we'll be back.